Today, I'm in conversation with Johnny Longdon, co-founder of Journey Further. From his background, you would see that experimentation and conversion rate optimization has coursed through his veins for over two thirds of his career. It's no wonder that he's fanatical about why using data and experimentation should be paramount for every organization who wants to succeed. Johnny, along your career, you've had data and analytics as a common thread for nearly 20 years. Yeah. What is it that fascinates you about being within this sector? And would you ever think about changing? Uh, I, I wouldn't change it, no. Um, it's been, it's really been the sort of core of my passion, as you say, for most of my career. Um, <clears throat> I think it's really about a temperament and a mindset, really. You know, um, I'm sure like a lot of people have done these kind of Myers-Briggs type things. And over the years for various different companies, I've done those. And I think there's a certain mindset that just, um, is in tune with data and sort of proof and evidence and things like that. And I think that's just the way my brain works. As a matter of interest, can you remember what your Myers-Briggs characterization traits were? I don't know the Myers-Briggs one. Um, but so the, we used to do one at Sky that was in colours, which I think are more or less always the same colours. They're sort of like colour charts. And you have blue, which is sort of very logical um, and numeric and rational and all that sort of stuff and then you have a red quadrant which is sort of more entrepreneurial sales business focused and I tend to hover somewhere in between those but a bit more to the blue so and that fits really well because that is that's really like how I've generally described the skills that I have it's a, a, a balance between understanding data and understanding the business side of things which i think is actually reasonably rare like you tend to find people that are incredibly good analysts but they don't necessarily have um, the communication skills and the business acumen to to think about business strategy and then you have the opposite which is very entrepreneurial people or uh, business people that you know have a vision and understand where is they want to go but they don't have the ability to or, or literacy to understand data um, and along the years the way i've really tended to describe what i do is about translation between those two things so i can sit reasonably comfortably in both worlds where i can understand a business requirement translate that into something that something somebody like a statistician can understand and deliver but then translate that back into something that's actually meaningful and years ago i, I did work in in more sort of um, data science really than in digital where that was more appropriate but yeah that's how i would uh, how i kind of describe the the thrust of my career really and what i've always been aiming because you moved into um conversion rate optimization cro uh, pretty early on i think it was somewhere around 2009 2008 something like that about 2008 i think i know um google website optimizer had only really been around for um probably even six months when when i ran the first ever test that i ran with it um, which was on the Mazda website, actually. Um, so, and what was it like in those days? Uh, it was very, very basic. I mean, obviously, there wasn't anything else to compare it with. So um, it wasn't, you know, you had no real kind of judgment on what it was like versus what it could be. Um, but, you know, it did the job. Um, it did the job effectively what we wanted it to do. So at the time as well, I had uh, I had coders that were really kind of uh, looking after it so i wasn't i wasn't having to build the test myself which interestingly that's that's the way i thought it would always be but it, it sort of moved away from that to being focused more on uh, people without coding skill using it you must have seen a fairly different approach to cro than in those days because at that time it was probably seen so much as a black art in fact i think probably today it's still seen as somewhat of a black art but at that point it must have been like trying to push water up a hill surely Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, um, I mean, the, really, like you know, looking back on all that time, I would say the the story of CRO really goes hand in hand with the story of um, web development generally and, and IT generally. So um, when when Google Website Optimizer came out, what we tended to find, like, so we had we had you know clients who had websites. And the reason it was so interesting wasn't really anything to do with the testing. It was the fact that all of a sudden they could make changes to their website without having to go through what had previously been very draconian IT processes. 
So you had companies who had websites and that website was managed and run by the same IT team that you would go and get your laptop fixed by. So literally like a group of, uh, of guys in the basement of the building or whatever. And some companies still haven't changed. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, people had no control over their website. They didn't even have a CMS mostly or anything like that. So, um, so they couldn't do anything to the website. So when, when these tools came out, overshadowing the fact that you could do testing was really the fact that, you know, somebody with no coding skill could make changes to the website. And that's really, I believe, where the term hacking came from, why a lot of people refer to hacking, because it literally was somebody outside of the IT environment with no access to the IT environment hacking the website as it appears externally to users. Um, and that's what gave rise to that whole industry where uh, people would would go and hire a consultant who, was, again, was on the outside, who would put this cool tool on your website and play around with button colors and things like that and tweak things. Meanwhile, you know, anything major was still going through this waterfall process with the IT team. And although a lot of companies still have problems with their IT, most don't. You know, most have moved to having agile teams internally or they've at least got agencies that in theory are more nimble. But the attitude and the perception of CRO has not caught up with that. And it's still very much seen as this sort of tactical hacky thing where even even companies, even massive companies that have big internal infrastructure around web development and innovation around web development, if they're doing CRO, a lot of the time, it's still this kind of separate thing where they've got a big roadmap of stuff going through this main IT team, which all comes from opinion and just seems like a good idea or annual strategy deck or something like that. And then they've got the CRO person over there who is playing around with sort of fairly simple front end elements and changing fairly basic things. And it doesn't make any sense because really at the end of the day, if you know, if it's done right, all it really is, is one using research analysis and data to understand what it is that you should be doing to your website or, you know, or anything digital and two, experimentation to validate that before you actually do it because even if you're interpreting data that's still your opinion of the data and you might be wrong and that's all it really is it's research and validation and if you look at it like that why would you do anything other than that because it's just it's just putting a rational scientific method behind what you do and it, and at the end of the day you know um, the one thing that you learn when you do a lot of testing is that it's very very hard to guess what's going to work the things that seem like no brainers will every day surprise you by having a detrimental impact and things that seem like they wouldn't ever work can have a really positive effect and that is the reality of it so you you have to test everything um and you know really it my sort of mission, I, I kind of see it in my mission to try and open people's eyes to that because I think people just have this incorrect perception of what CRO is and without really even potentially thinking about it. You know, so one of the challenges is I think you have, you have sort of fairly senior people in businesses and if you ask them, you know, do you do CRO? They'd go, well, yeah, we've got a CRO person, so we do it. And, um, oh yeah, we've got an agent, our dev agency, we, we pay them for, 10 hours a month of CRO. So yeah, we do it. We tick that box. Um, and yet, do, are they really doing that? Are they really reaping the benefits of a proper rational scientific approach behind their decision-making? No, they're using that old-fashioned method. Um, so yeah, it's a rather long-winded answer, but that's that's how I see the history of it and, and really why, why it's challenging at, even now. I still believe there's a perception even now that every test has to be seen as positive. And yet we learn so much more from those tests that often aren't successful. Yeah, that's and that's a really, uh, really difficult thing. And that's something that we grapple with now on a daily basis. Like, how do you demonstrate the value of what it is? Um, because, yeah, people, people will just kind of look to the winning tests and the benefit of those winning tests. And really... You're listening to the short exactly version of this podcast. To listen and to the full version, no visit your favourite podcast player and search for Web Trends Optimize or The Big Lift.